Hi there, Toy here, and it's time for my June book reviews. Alright, so let's see what I read in June. Um, I actually read a lot. I was surprised. I haven't really been doing a whole lot other than coping right now. Um, if you follow my Toy Thomas Toy Box channel, there should be some videos posted there. Probably around the same time this video is posted, updates of what I've been reading, things that I've been doing. So a lot of that's just coping. <laughs> so I've been trying to keep up with my reviews every month. So I'm actually early this month. I didn't want to risk it. I'm calling June, even though it's still technically June. But here's what I read. <laughs> All right. So the first thing I read was Bad Fairy. And this is a middle grade book, which I'm trying to read more of. And I gave it an overall rating of five stars. I read this story during a very emotional time in the middle of the Black Lives Matter resurgence to seek justice for murdered black people at the hands of law enforcement. And it was a nice reprieve. This, the message of the story sounds simple enough. And yet, sadly, people of all ages still need to be taught it. Thus, the emotional time I was going through when reading it. This bright and whimsical tale of fairies, brownies, trolls, and more carries many messages within its fun pages. The characters are, of course, cute, but they're also but they also have substance. This is definitely not a two-dimensional, sugar-coated work of fluff. Even though finishing the story will leave you feeling warm and fuzzy all over. When the character deemed the bad fairy is challenged with coming up with the new rule for the whole town, she begins to reevaluate her own set of personal rules she never previously given much thought to. It's a real eye opener for her and the reader. My favorite part of the story is how the author has the bad fairy realize that people often misjudge, not only others, but themselves. People, and fairies alike, tend to think better of themselves and less of others for doing the same or similar things. But if we're lucky, we come to terms with our mistakes and begin to show others the compassion we, ourselves, would like to receive. While this is a children's story, I didn't really expect anything too bad to happen. The suspense of the twisty did have me a little worried about the village. Young readers will definitely enjoy reading through that and reaching the conclusion of the story. The story has an overall message of the importance of community that I wasn't expecting. We live in a very self-centered world and I felt it was a smart and brave move on the author's part to put such an emphasis on the community as a whole recovering and not just the main character and her family. I look forward to more from this author. Highly recommend it. The next thing I read was a picture book called Ladder to the Moon. And I gave this an overall rating of 3.75, which is bumped up to four stars. And I will explain that in the review. I wanted to start out by saying that I really enjoyed this story. The only reason I'm not giving this a higher rating is because I worry that the story may, be may not be comprehensible to many young readers without an in-depth explanation. The art in this story is beautiful. The illustrator did an excellent job. The story could almost be told without any words and have the same effect. You can tell the artist and the writer worked closely or at least share a special bond with this story. The story itself is very deep and emotional. Aside from significant cultural influences throughout the story, the afterlife theme seems to be most dominant. We have a child who traverses the moon and the world with her deceased grandmother in a type of dreamlike state where they interact with others, living and not. It's a lot to take in and process. I read it three times and still feel that each reading brought about new questions and wonders. I would definitely recommend parents try this book with their kids if they are open to sharing alternative afterlife concepts or as long as it isn't deemed a conflict to their own views of the afterlife because this is going to require some discussion. Recommend it to those who are open-minded and who are seeking cultural diversity and reads.
Okay, so the next book that I read was a romantic comedy called Smitten with Ravioli. I gave it an overall rating of five stars, so let's get into it. This was fun. I've come to expect good things from this author when it comes to cozy mysteries, and now I can see that she's got a fan in the rom-com department now. This book was funny from start to finish, and the romance didn't annoy me. Not sure if that came off right. I sometimes struggle with reading romance. Oddly enough, I felt there was one thing missing that the story could have used a little bit more of, though it in no way took away from the overall story, and that's cooking. I thought there would be more cooking based on the title, but once you get into the story and meet the characters, it makes sense that there wasn't more. I like the phobia theme that ran throughout the story and the main character's sensitivity to smells, which I can totally relate to. All the other characters, even some of the cranky silver foxes, yeah, I know, just read the book, were nicely developed to the point where they didn't take over but also didn't feel like useless filler. This was very quick and light, perfect for when you want to stop thinking about other stuff and just relax. Disclaimer. I received a free digital arc of the book with no obligation to review. Highly recommended to fans of humor, rom-coms, and this author. So next I read another picture book. This one is called Not Norman, A Goldfish Story, and I gave this an overall rating of 5 stars. So cute and yet kind of deep. I really enjoyed the story for many reasons. The illustrations are simple and cute. The main character is a person of color. The story has nothing to do with him being a person of color. There are cute animals in it. I'm an animal lover. And there's a good message. What's not to like? This is a great don't judge a book by its cover story. It can also be helpful in teaching kids about the importance and reward of taking responsibility for choices and caring for others. General relationship stuff. It's not a long story, so I won't say too much and give it all away. I will say that not all kids get to have pets, which is sad, but I like that this story teaches that sometimes you get what's best for you instead of what you want, which is more than most of us deserve. Highly recommended. So the next book I read is a middle grade anthology and um, I gave it an overall rating of five stars and I'll just go ahead and say that this is probably the best book I've read this year so far and I know that's a bit bold but I really I, I feel that right now and I'll probably read this book again before the end of the year so let's just get into it. It's been a long time since I've read a collection of various genre stories that had me so overwhelmed with emotion at the end and the fact that it's a middle grade collection still boggles my mind. If I were still in the classroom I would ask all my kids parents to seriously consider having their kids read this book. While some of the stories are light most are deep and are emotionally intense but still perfectly suited for young readers to grasp the depth of the concept and themes presented. There isn't one story in this collection I wouldn't give an, an individual five-star rating to. With that said, The Blind Ship and Winter Days have still stuck with me days after reading the collection. Kudos to each of these authors, the IWSG, and the Dancing Lemur Press for releasing such an amazing book. I will read this again before the year ends. And then I list the... Um, titles of the stories in the collection. The Third Ghost, The Ghost of Pompeii, The Blind Ship, Dare Double Dare, Return to Cahokia, Feathered Fire, The Orchard, Simon Gray and the Yomamba, A World of Trouble, and Winter Days. Highly recommend it to anyone but especially young readers with parent approval. Alright so the next thing that I read was a um, I guess this would be like a paranormal suspense thriller <laughs> um, or maybe like a light horror I don't know is that a thing light horror <laughs> dark it's not dark fantasy no 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 no, no. anyway <laughs> it is the city of ghosts and I gave it an overall rating of five stars let's get to it here's another book I waited too long to read 
Luckily, I already have the next one in the series. Even though dark thrillers and horror stories are, aren't usually my preferred read, this story didn't come off so scary that I couldn't sleep at night. But then, I did make a point not to read it right before going to bed. I think what's so scary about this story is that if you take all of the paranormal ele elements out, it's still scary. What happens to the main character is the worst nightmare of anyone traveling in a foreign country. Most of the characters in this story are so real that they are actually annoying because you've met these people. I think it's a mark of good writing when you can say to yourself, if that character was real, I'd avoid them like the plague <laughs> and they're not even some kind of creature. Still, there were some likable characters who weren't perfect by any means, but realistic, normal, and likable. I find that the MC is rarely my favorite character in a good book, but I actually liked Jackson a lot. I also liked Kate and believe we'll be learning more about her in the next book. Aside from the intense suspense and paranormal elements of this story, there are other darker parts that were hard to read in this current age of self-centeredness, bullying, racism, sexism, passive conscientiousness. I know that's not a term, but it should be. Still, I'm glad I read this and all the ugly parts that came with it. Sometimes you have to get through the ugly to find beauty. I thoroughly enjoyed this book and look forward to more in the series. Highly recommend it to horror, suspense thriller, and paranormal fans. Also a great diversity read. So my next read is another picture book and I actually discovered this book along with some others that I haven't gotten to yet in a Facebook group to promote black business owners. And um, I've, I'm always trying to discover new books, so not only am I discovering new black authors, I'm discovering other black businesses that I can support. So this book is called My Big Curly Fro. I gave it an overall rating of 4.75. That was bumped up to five stars. And here's the review. This is such a cute and important book for young black girls and anyone who's ever felt different because of how they look. It's a good story to help teach about self-esteem, cultural and personal identification, and even friendship. Overall, I really liked the story and its lovely illustrations. The main two reasons I didn't give this story five stars was that one, there were some tense issues in the text, but nothing that took away from the message or readability. Two, I was left wondering why one girl's mother taught her about how to take care of her hair and the other didn't. I kind of felt like something was missing from that part of the story, but it's not something I think most readers would even consider. I plan to share this with anyone who will look at it, especially my friends with Young Black Girls for Daughters. Highly recommend it. And on a side note, um, Amazon let me post this review, but they hid it because of sensitivity reasons. I don't even know what that means. I don't care. I'm moving on. So the next book I read was a uh, another middle grade story. It's actually another story in a series I've been kind of reading. This is a uh, Pixie Dust series, Acta's, I always say that wrong, <laughs> Acta's Ice Headache. And I gave it an overall rating of five stars. And I think some of the other stories in the series that I've read so far I've been giving four stars to, but I really like this one. So here's the review. This is the third book I've read in this character's world. Not sure if this is a series. Um, the more I read about this character, the more I like her. This seems to be the story of how Actica becomes a real hero. I'd already read how she becomes a monster haunter and really appreciated this point of view of her story. This was another short read. It was easy and cute, but also very sad. Still, not so sad as to bring you down. I like the whimsical world and the tone of the story and hope the author continues to revisit this character. Recommend it. So the last thing I read in June was a short story or a novelette um, called Messenger When the Raven Calls, Listen. And I gave it an overall rating of 4.75 and so let's get into the review. This was an intense short read that kept me interested from beginning to end. The story, the plot, is the star of this show. It's a suspense thriller with a touch of paranormal. 
Plus there's a raven, my new favorite obsession. The only reason I didn't give this five stars was because I wanted to know more about the characters. Since this was a short story novelette, I understand not spending too much time on character details. Still, don't let me paint you the wrong picture. These, um, for the story being told, these are fully developed characters. I simply wanted to know more about them. In essence, I wish the story were longer and I could delve into these characters and the plot more. Highly recommended to fans of paranormal suspense and short fiction. So that's what I read in June, and actually I'm reading something right now that at the rate I'm going, I might actually finish it before June is over because it's still technically June. Um, I'm either going to finish this on the last day of June or the first day of July. I don't know. I'm flying through this book. If you want to know what it is, check out my other channel. But otherwise, um, these are my June reviews. And let me know what you think of some of the things that I've read. Maybe share some things that you've read. How are you coping during this time? COVID, Black Lives Matter, Pride, all these things are happening right now. And it's just, for me, books are helping. So I hope you enjoyed some of these view reviews. And that's all I have for now. Bye.